Enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Ah, good morning, everyone. Hi. Hello. Time for another radio show. Oh, my God. We got a busy day, too. Very, very busy day. Ball. Kind of bummed. I thought I thought you would have seen the uh, the John Spano thing by now. No, I heard about it. I want to discuss that so badly with you. Who's John Spano? I heard he, about he it. He bought the Islanders even though he had no money. Literally had no money. Mm. I think he, they said he was worth maybe a couple hundred thousand or maybe he had a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank. <laughs> and he had to come up maybe. with $165 million in cash to buy the team. This was back in the uh, the mid '90s, right? He was our big, uh, our big, you know, great white hope. Oh yeah, for us Islanders Apparently. fans. And uh, Islanders were sucking bad, and uh, this guy comes rolling in from Texas, thirty-two year old guy that looks like he was fifty at the time, <laughs> horseshoe bald, basically uh, giving everyone a lot of hope that uh, he's going to turn around the Islanders, keep them on Long Island, get a new arena. Get rid of that stupid Islanders uh, logo, the old one. Or, well, not the old one, the in-between one, I guess I should say. Yeah. Then they went back to the old one. And then everything slowly but surely started falling apart on this guy. He needed to come up with $165 million. He was able to get a loan from uh, a bank in Boston, Fleet Bank, for mm-hmm. 80 was it 80 or $85 million? $85 mil? $85 million. By forging all sorts of documents. How do you do that? Well, it was the mid '90s. That just seems he even amazing. Because they they interview him in this thing, this 30, uh, 30 on thirty or thirty for thirty. What is uh-huh. it called? Thirty on thirty. Thirty for thirty. Thirty for thirty. Sam saw it as well, and uh, yeah, he he forged documents, and he even admits because they they interview him as you know as he is today. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, I don't think anyone could get away with you know forging documents like that. Right. But back then he was able to do it, and Fleet Bank went for it and said, "Here, here's your eighty million dollars." <laughs> so then all he had to do was come up with another eighty million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> and then he had all sorts of excuses, and people started closing in on him, going, "What the fuck's going on here?" And he was able to make a deal, going, "Look, I owe you eighty. I think it was eighty-five. I owe you 85, so I'll give you 17 million a year for the next five years. So he had to come up with a first 17 million dollar payment. Once again, the guy only had a couple hundred thousand to his name. Which you know, if if you think about it, that's broke. Yes. When you you need 17 million. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then uh, the guy's like, "Look, I need my 17 million." He goes, "I'm going to wire it, no problem." So he wires him 1,700 dollars. Yeah. And the guy has to call him up and go, there's some kind of mistake. Uh, it was, it's supposed to be $17 million. This is missing a few zeros. I just got 1700 He goes, that's impossible. <laughs> but The, the pan- bank must have fucked up. The panic that it set in, too, because when he transferred the 1700 yeah. and he owed them another $85 million, yeah. they had already signed the team to him. Yeah. They sold him the team even though he didn't have the money because yeah, he said, I'll pay you tomorrow if you sell yeah. me the team today. He was a great talker, and he was able to go, oh, no, I'm good for it. And he, <laughs> yeah. and he would show all these documents of all his money and his and his uh, finances. You know, they, it was tied up here in the Cayman Islands. It was tied up in England. It was this and that. But it, 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 he had numbers he that he was pulling, showing uh, people. He was pulling a Jerry Lundegaard. Yes. That's exactly what he was doing. Yes. Oh, we'll get those numbers to you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll send them right over. Oh, uh, Mr. Lundegaard, uh, if you don't send those over, we're going to have to recall those loans. Ah, uh-huh. okay. <laughs> That's exactly what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Best, best panicked acting ever. Oh, oh God, amazing. Great. You knew something awful was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Okay, yeah, right, good. We're pretty busy, but that's the way we like it here. <laughs> and then he, Is this the Clark Gillies clip? Uh, it's, it is just the trailer. Oh, you want to see the trailer of this at least, Dan? Uh huh. All right. They were a team like no other. Hometown heroes. Probably not. Role models. Probably nice. Julie Smith. Champions. Bossy. They were the most successful expansion franchise of all time. We always said the success we had was our respect for the New York Islanders and what we learned Gretzky. from them. Talk. And when the triumphs ended, it was a long fall to the bottom. And that was ugly. I wouldn't have bought a ticket to watch our team play. We sucked. Mike Milbury. Until a savior emerged. 
<laughs> All of a sudden, <laughs> here comes this Savior. white knight, John Spano, <laughs> in to save the Islanders. There's been a commitment made here in Long Island by a fellow by the name of John Spano. Fuck you, uh, now he wants to turn the franchise around. I mean, it was our dream. Turn this thing around. Here is the next coming. You know, this is the next Messiah of Long Island. He's coming in and he's going to take this franchise to the promised land. He would walk into a room and there'd be thousands of Islander fans screaming his name. Oh wow. wow, the guy was great. But the guy wasn't who he said he was. And in the end, the dream came crashing down. <laughs> it's being arrested. John Spano's failed attempt upon the New York Islanders spiraled into federal court today where the 33-year-old businessman was arraigned on fraud charges on Long Island. He committed mail fraud, he committed wire fraud, and he committed bank fraud. He jumped in with both feet and almost pulled off the American dream. He fooled lots and lots of people. Gary Bettman. He toyed wow. with us on so many levels. It was all his attempt to be a big shot. They call it big. It was shot. everything I hoped it would be, and actually, it was more. I mean, for four months, I owned the New York Islanders. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, look at him. It's a, uh, it's an uh, amazing story, and you don't even have to be a hockey fan. You don't have to be an Islander fan. What years was that? Uh, like ninety uh, six ish. Do you think. remember him? Remember like? Oh, we him? all did. We were all excited because That's after hilarious. the Islanders won those Stanley Cups. You know, there was a lot of lean years, horrible years, and uh, and also this guy came in like they said, like a white knight to save the the franchise, and he was a bust. He was he was a fraud basically in the end. A fraud. He only had a couple hundred thousand dollars to his name, and he was he bought a fucking hockey team. That's pretty really? amazing, really, because no one was doing their their research or their background checks or and, nothing. And he looked terrible for thirty three too. Awful. Oh my god, he looked like he was fifty. Awful. Yeah. So you know, and the so he was able to get the eighty eighty five from uh, Fleet Bank in Boston, oi, <laughs> and then uh, you know the uh, the owner who was selling the team's like, all right, now you now you owe me another eighty five million, because all right, I'll give you seventeen seventeen over you know a year for the next five years, and then he wires him seventeen hundred in a panic because he doesn't have it, thinking, thinking that's gonna that's gonna like buy him some time, seventeen hundred because who would yeah, buy that? That's it. On that level where guys are like multi-millionaires uh -huh. slash almost billionaires, if something like that happens, you're not going to think that the guy actually meant to wire you 1700 Right. you, you got to assume right off, right off the bat that's just some <laughs> ridiculous banking error. Well, then he went and blamed an IRA bombing that he saw on the news. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On the delay of payment. On another delay of payment. Mike Milbury was so good on it. He was great. Well, Mike Milbury is a jerk. He called him like, an asshole. Jerk. And he's calling Spano an asshole and a jerk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mike Milbury's ornery. They kept showing the clips of Mike Milbury going into the stands and beating up the Rangers fan with his own shoe. Yeah, that's a very famous hockey clip. Oh, yeah, yeah. Milbury when he was playing I remember for the that Browns, one. Yep. He, he hates, to this day, I think, the Rangers. Ke Kevin Connolly said he just threw that clip in over and over because he knew that wherever you throw it in, it's going to be a laugh. Yeah, of course. Kevin Connolly did a great job. He directed the, the 30, uh, 30 for 30. So. Oh, is that why he was here? He was here promoting that? Was he promoting that? Yeah. Did we try to get him on? I think you guys passed on him. I interviewed him. You? I don't think. Did we pass on? I, I don't know if I would have passed on that one. Being an mm -hmm. Islander fan, he might. It might have been because he was. No, in the I don't think. I, I don't think we passed on that one. To be honest with you, I, I think it was know. a timing issue. We would have had him on in a second. He's a hardcore Islander fan, born and raised on Long Island. So yeah. And then in the end, you know, it all came crumbling down and. Oh he, yeah. He gets arrested and he he does four years in prison. <laughs> And then he moves back to Ohio and starts a, a small business. And then he, he got caught there. <laughs> yeah, and I guess he apparently was Mr. Fraud over there, too. And then had to do another four years. But they were very vague about that. I'm not sure if he did another four years in prison or it was probation or, or what. The only thing he, he, he messed up on with this whole thing was not telling us what he's doing today. Like, what is John Spano doing today? You interviewed him throughout the entire documentary. What is he doing today? Oh, they didn't do a little update? No. Mm -mm. Mm. They should have had, you know, the the graphic, you know, as, yeah, 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 with the music, and the, you freeze frame the guy and go, "This is what he's doing now." You have. To, I even like that with fictional characters. I certainly want that with the real guy. You have to. That's. Uh, but besides that, it, it was uh, it was well done. Gives you the whole history of the Islanders, where they came from, and mm -hmm. how bad it got, and this guy trying to trying to buy the team. That's how desperate they were, though. They're like, "Yeah, all right, yeah. If this guy wants the fucking team, give it to him. Fuck uh -huh. it." His spin on it was so stupid. He, at the end of the movie, he said, you know, my dad said a lot of people, they have these dreams and they don't even try it. Son, 
You tried. It, it, it was cr- criminal. But he lied. Yeah. He didn't try it was a at liar. All. Yeah, I want to be an ice skater. Right. I can fool people. Well, into, <laughs> it's my dream. And instead of saying, you know, I shouldn't have done this, he goes, if I had one more week, I would have pulled this off. He's one thinking more one more week. week, he would have figured out how to get that $17 million How would for he the get first $17 million? But then he would have to get another $17 million the, <laughs> right. the next year. How you worry about that one? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And then he's partying at the Garden City uh, Hotel. Mm-hmm. That's a big, uh, famous spot out there on Long Island. You know, a lot of the rich and famous go. Sure. When they're uh, hanging out on Long Island, and a lot of the Islanders and the organization used to, I'm not sure if they still hang out there, I have no idea, but he would go there and party and get whores and stuff. Whores. He, 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 he was sitting in the lounge just partying with Mike Milbury, and he goes, hey, I got some girls. They're going to do each other, and then they're going to do us. Wow. And he, and he like, he uh, billed the, the, the team hundreds of thousands of dollars because he was flying around and partying. I was living the life. <laughs> And he had no money. Right? He had no money. But at the end of the day, they said he was actually a good owner because when they did finally sell the team after they got it back from him, they sold the team for more than they were going to sell yeah. it to him. Yeah. Wow. They made an extra $30 million. He increased the value. Yeah. He made an extra $30 million, the other guy, the old owner that was trying to sell it to Spano. All because he got that Gordon's Fisherman off the jersey. Right. <laughs> that stupid Gordon's what Fisherman. What was the old logo? Yeah. I don't remember. Oh, they... They decided the Islanders went so bad, we got to change the logo, and we all hated it as fans. It, it was terrible. It, it looked like the, yeah, that's... that. Look at that yeah. dumb... <laughs> oh, yuck. No, wait, that was the original one? Or that's no, the, no, 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 no. That's the 96 logo. It's yeah, a that was fisherman like kind of mid-90s. With a hockey stick. <laughs> yeah. <'cause laughs> Doesn't I guess, make any sense. Well, if you live on Long Island, you fish, you know. Yeah, right? There's a fishing community here and there. <laughs> but what's the old one? What's the other one? What's the one that the fans like? The one that they have now. Yeah, the, uh, they went the original back one? to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they just went back to that, you know. Okay. The old Long Island, New yeah. York, the Y is a hockey stick, yeah, and the yeah, Islanders no. across the bottom. Oh, I like the fisherman. I think go. he's fun. You like the fisherman? Oh, I think it's but fun. It, but it's like a horrible, like, it's terrible. drawing. And just, yeah, it's very complicated uh, looking. It really is. You don't... You don't even really know what it is it's at first. It's a big blue blob at first. Exactly. You, you got to look. Is it a mountain? Always having fun. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Who designed that? Can you imagine, I was thinking when I was watching this, the panic this guy must have felt. Oh. oh Just oh, waiting imagine. for... It's the famous thing we always talk about where, you know, the, the feds are closing in and they're going to be yeah, yeah. knocking on his door any night. He talks about how the stress and the pressure, and he had a grandfather clock down the hall. He lived in Texas, but he came oh, up no. here a lot. The TikTok. And he would just hear the TikTok, and, and it ring in 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and he's just sitting there in bed going, how the fuck am I going to pull this off? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he said he would just stay up all night, like, realizing that this was the only time he had, because as soon as the sun came up, it was going to be a whole new set of problems. Yep. Oh, God, that's like... It's like our old bit if he did fall asleep, you know? Of course. You hear that nice fucking, you're just there, you lay in bed, oh, maybe. Oh, okay. You know? <sighs> oh, I finally got some sleep. I, oh, my God. That was nice. Oh, I haven't slept well in a long time. Oh, what time is it? Oh, 7 a.m. Oh, God. What am I going to do today? I think I have something to do. Oh, my God. I got to come up with $17 million. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm a complete fraud. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think we can get him on the show, too, by the way. Yeah. John Spano? Yeah, I think he's talking. He's talking. <laughs> He's checking. He is talking. He wanted to be a big shot. That's why this thing's called Big Shot. Didn't you? And he was a Texas guy. <laughs> he he kind of hung out with uh, Starback a little bit. Did he? A little bit. Or used his company. There was some kind of connection to Starback. I'm sure it was some kind of fucking yeah. ruse. He <laughs> Jerry Jones would invite him to watch the Cowboys uh, games in the box. So he was a he was an up and coming businessman. He had a small business in you know Dallas. He did okay, but but he wasn't worth even a million dollars. He wanted to skip all that building the yeah. business up to the right. point. Just skip over that and go right to the top. And I didn't know this until I, I watched this. He he went for two other teams before the Islanders. 
Really? He went for the Dallas uh, North Stars, and then he went for the Florida Panthers. Wow. What happened? They asked to see a bank statement, and yeah. it all fell apart? <laughs> yeah, right? Who well, did, how do you well the Dallas off? North Stars is a really funny one, because they're getting together to make this deal. Like, they're just starting to talk, <clears throat> and they go to lunch. And Spano's the guy that's going to buy the, the Dallas North Stars at the time. Right. So they're all having lunch, discussing. It's early on. And the bill comes... And they all are assuming, I guess, in the business world, especially when you're making deals, you know, everyone just knew it was Spano's check to pick up. Yeah, it was just a, it was just a thing. You just know. So they're all just sitting there going, "What the fuck? The guy's not going to pick up the check? Pick up the fucking check for lunch?" And he didn't pick up the check, and that was one of the first red flags. Allow me to pay the check. They're like, <laughs> okay, "Why, Ralph?" They're like, "Why isn't he picking up the check?" Wow, it was some breaking protocol. Everybody exactly. Kind of as far as you know, deal making again. Yeah, they just knew that. Like, what? He's he he's the one that's supposed to be paying for this, and he's not at that point. And then uh, the Florida Panthers, uh, they were starting to talk, but then um, then I guess they got a new arena or something, so the the owner didn't want to sell. So then you know, lucky here, here come the Islanders. Damn, I loved it, man. I really liked it a lot, and I don't think you have to be a hockey sounds great slash sports fan to enjoy it. Where do you see it? ESPN. ESPN. Oh, okay. What's it like an hour? Yeah, the 30 for Two 30. Hours. Hour and a half. The 30 for 30 is great. The Sugar Ray Leonard uh, No Moss one was great, too. Oh, my God. That was awesome. No Moss. With uh, Roberto Roberto. Duran. Yeah, I didn't see that. And, and what I learned about that one, I didn't realize they fought for the third time. Did you know that? No, I knew it was two. I forgot. Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, Roberto Duran had two amazing fights. And then after No Moss. You fast forward, I think it was uh, eight years, uh, it might have been nine years. Nine years later, they fought, and they were both over the hill. Duran was 38 at the time, and they considered him over the hill. And Sugar Ray Leonard was only 33, and they considered him over the hill already at 33, mm. 33 years old. For their third fight? Their third fight, which I believe Leonard won, but it was like no one really remembers that fight. It was almost like a throwaway. But go watch No Moss as well. That's, that's great. I heard he's really heavy now, uh, D- Duran. It didn't seem heavy in the uh, thirty for thirty. Was that was he shot recently? Yeah, it's, oh, maybe it must. Weight. Yeah, I mean he's a lot heavier than when he was boxing, but I didn't look at him like he was a fat guy or anything like that. So <laughs> he's claiming that he had cramps, what? and he had to drop a lot of weight. He he refuses to you know tell anyone the truth because everyone's like, oh, that's bullshit. <laughs> He had cramps. <laughs> well, he he after he beat uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, he went on a partying uh, spree. Yeah, and gained a lot of weight. And and the second fight was only I didn't know this either. It was only because you forget because nowadays they wait. They fought like four or five months later. I didn't know yeah. that yeah, I remember after that. the first fight. So he had to drop a lot of weight quickly, and he's claiming because of that he was you know dehydrated pretty good, and he started cramping up. A little crampy. Yeah. I told my gym teacher I had cramps once. And? And he called me like a faggot and said only girls <laughs> only girls get cramps. Because I didn't know about periods and girls getting their cramps when they have periods. And I thought like because I had like a stomach ache and my yeah. intestines were like, ah, and I was kind of out. Sure. Uh, I said, oh, I can't. I can't do, you know, gym today. I have cramps. <laughs> he's like, what are you, a faggot? You're only girl to get cramps. The good old days. I love the fact that every older male. Yes, called me a faggot. Oh, you're a homosexual. <laughs> <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's what I did last night. I watched this fucking thing. I watched a different documentary. Hmm. Yeah, it was like, you know, the, um, the more uh, tender side of uh, Anthony. I watched that... Uh, that was called uh, Sam or Life According to Sam. That little kid with progeria it was on HBO. Oh, oh boy. it was terrible. I felt so bad. I know, you know, I'm still going to be like, well, I'm just a normal kid. But uh, <laughs> yeah. it's like this woman, she's a doctor. She's married to an, a doctor, and they have this kid, and he's fuck, got progeria. There's only like 250 progeria kids in the whole world. Do they know before you're born? No, I don't think they do. You sure? sure? No, nah, they figured it out. Uh, like they just isolated the gene for it now, so they don't even know. There's only like, 250. Yeah, they don't even know, like in utero, that it's uh, gonna fuck you up or anything. That it's gonna, oh you know, the kid's God. gonna be fucked up. Dude, I would. This looks like a tearjerker. It was pretty sad. Life according to Sam on HBO. It's look at all the awards it's won. I know it's really good. He's uh, he's like 13 though, so most of them. 
That's the top end of their fucking lifespan. 13. They had one that was 18. This girl from like India. Oh man, was she a disaster? Really? Yeah. And then this, this, they don't make it to 20, right? Nah, I don't think they do. They don't make it past usually fucking 12, 13. So this kid's like fucking 13 at the time. And he's really like smart and just a nice kid. And he just looks so wacky. They show him in school and he's fucking rattling off algebra to this other kid, like helping other kids in the class and stuff. And, uh, yeah, the mother and father are doctors. Right. And they had this kid, and like after a couple of months, they're kind of looking at the kid going like, something's not oh, right. Shit. So they take the kid to the doctor and shit. And of course, the doctors don't know. They're not going to, they're not going to like think it's something that only 250 kids in the whole right. world have. And then finally, some one doctor was like, I think you're, you know, kid has progeria. And they looked at, um, pictures of other progeria kids at that same age and they're like oh yeah that's exactly wow what's, the, know, what's the physical sign the physical the thing, first thing that they notice uh it's like the skin looks very thin and translucent and you're jaundiced and the eyes look a little fucking buggy oh and shit well, that's and then it know, just keeps gaining going. a lot of weight yeah yeah and the kid wasn't gaining weight right that's another thing that's why the eyes look buggy but then the, like they get arthritic big arthritic joints their their cartilage and stuff gets also their nose gets really big and their ears get all fucked up and their fingernails get all fucked up and then the bad part physically is that their um their uh, cardiovascular system they start getting like hardening of the arteries and shit at fucking like eight Jesus. um yeah that's that's so the, the mother like dedicated a life uh, to to doing a study because they they isolated the gene and then realized the gene had certain similarities to this drug. So they're like, all right, we're going to try this drug study. So they started doing that over the course of uh, about uh, two and a half years, which is like, you know, these kids are like little mayflies right. walking around. Um, yeah, he must hate recess at school. Yeah, yeah. That's got to be like a year to him. Oh, my God, right? Like, seriously? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they, they, they got a bunch of kids from uh, all over the world with progeria and brought them in like... Uh, um, how many were it? Like 30 or something? 30 of these kids? Maybe more? And uh, started giving them this drug. Now, the thing is, the uh, the way the FDA works, which is ridiculous, any FDA approval should be given to progeria drugs because, you know, fucking kids. They don't have the time. They don't have the time to fuck around. Yeah. Um, what do they have to lose? Exactly. So, uh, so th th it's usually done with a placebo group, you know? And a, a, dr a, a group that's actually taking the drugs. But she didn't want to be, you know, again, these kids don't have much time. She didn't want to not give some kids the drug right. and give other kids the drug. So she gave all the kids the drug. So in the FDA, there's this protocol that you have to go through. And they were like, well, no, you didn't have a test group with the, uh, with the placebo. So we're not going to approve any of this medication. And the medication apparently did slow down this aging process in these kids. But they wouldn't approve the fucking drug because they didn't have the test group properly. Amazing, some fucking bureaucratic scumbag. Exactly, so, it was so fucking ridiculous. So where are they now? Well, uh, with, with the whole drug thing. She, yeah. she, she. Oh, got, is that going to be in the? Mo it's in the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what happens uh, to the kid. I'm saying. I mean, I'm sure yeah. he's dead. But I don't. I don't want to know it. Uh, no, actually, I'll be. I, I'll spoil it for you. The kid doesn't die by the end of the movie. He's oh, actually good. 15 by the time the the movie or is 16. He, is I he think. taking the drug? Uh, no. But they have this, they're, they're kind of making headway and getting approval of some type of fucking treatment. There's no cure. There's just uh, treatment. But they had all these other kids and stuff with progeria. And it's like, oh, you know, one kid winds up dying during the thing. Of course. Like, what could the drug do that's terrible. worse if you're going right? to die so quickly? I mean, exactly. <laughs> that's just it. There, there, there should be like these exceptions. Yeah. Put them on um, a, put them on an island or something. If you're scared, right? <laughs> if you're scared, they're going to turn into monsters or zombies and at least give them a chance to continue living. The, uh, the, the best part of it though, is this fucking kid. It's like, oh, he's got all this shit going on. And there he is in school. Fucking he's in band. And he's fucking like all, all kinds of activities and winning all kinds of awards for his studies and everything. And, well, and you just look and go, this kid's got such bullshit in his life. What teacher gives what asshole teacher gives him a B? Right. Just uh, give him yeah. A's across the board. Yeah, what are you doing? On, help out. Leave him alone. And all the kids in school were like fucking nice to him and hugging him and high fiving him and shit. 
That's I, cool. I have a story about him going to Disney to, and he gets on a ride. And it wasn't even like a roller coaster ride, and he broke two ribs. Right. Just wow. Fucking, yeah, yeah, because uh. he's got fucking, you know, osteo I, fucking porosis or whatever. It's just terrible. Anthony's becoming a person. <laughs> no, I don't between like the it. kitten and the progeria. <laughs> I, <was just> <laughs> well, I mean, I think I, I think our I think our audience gets really confused by us. I because, know we're very yeah. Confused. You're going to do the progeria voice and get some jokes in, <laughs> no, but still but do we it. do have souls. <laughs> like this brings up a point. A lot of people have sent me the the clip of the the two Down syndrome kids being. Um, they, they voted him prom king. And, oh, and yeah. King. Uh-huh. But they sent it to me like, oh, well, I can't wait for you guys to beat the shit out of these <laughs> two. I know. And I'm like, you just don't really. And I, I don't blame some people, I yeah. guess, because uh-huh. I, I understand what we do on a, a daily basis. But that's that's the type <laughs> of thing not. we wouldn't go after. <laughs> it's not. And they're like, oh, more PC shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not. That's not it. The, uh, what makes yeah. that story so fucking cool is that the whole high school got together and said, you know what, let's do a good thing here. Yeah. And they, when they drop pig's blood on them at the end, it's really... <laughs> but it wasn't like, it wasn't like they rigged the voting and like, look, let's... Right, right. Or, or the school decided, no, the, 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 the students themselves came together and said, let's do this nice thing. Right. I'm saying this to you because I can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dude, that's that's the um, th- that's how I I found out about this documentary. Somebody tweeted the link and goes, Anthony, you gotta see this. Right. I can't wait to hear you fucking goof on it. This little fucker deserves everything you're gonna give him tomorrow. Yeah. Hit him with both barrels, <laughs> right? Make so, it hurt. What the fuck would I? Yeah. What could I possibly say? And fair enough, there, it's <laughs> it's subtle, but there is like uh, I don't know. There's a balance. There's a humanity that sometimes people don't think that we have. Right. Like I, I'll make fun of retarded uh, people in in a an abstract thing. Of course. But as far as like if somebody tweets me a photo of a retarded kid with Tony Romo, that famous picture. Mm. I can't retweet that and goof on it. It's just no, too sad. Nah, it's like, nah, and there's a difference terrible. between taking a real kid who's retarded and I, fucking sending his picture out. It's a like, Jesus. And, and I'll tell you this, you know, uh, I turned the corner on, you know, the kid that that's doesn't have much time and they give him the ball in the football games. Let uh, him run. You did? I, I think Jimmy was the only one in studio that was for it from the beginning, I believe. And I was like, oh, God, you know, this got to be a, <laughs> something else you could do. Really? I'm, I'm all yeah. in now. What does what it fucking hurt? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty silly. Yeah. It, it, I thought it was kind of, yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, they I, had, I'm uh, all in with that shit too. Whatever. Yeah, you give the boy a little happiness as opposed to what? The, right. the, the jocks who are going to have lifetimes of happiness. Right. <laughs> Let the kid run. Fuck him. Yeah, I saw the, um, I saw uh, in this uh, documentary, he's, he's on the, like a drumline thing at one of the football games and they had to make a special harness for him. So it doesn't just bust his fucking little bones. And he's playing the fucking drums and the father's like in the bleachers and he's all proud. All right? proud. It's just like fucking, uh, and then uh, the whole time you're just going, Oh yeah, he's an absentee landlord. Yeah. There's no God. <laughs> Where is your God? <laughs> Where people that are against like, all this research that will fix this shit, so you don't have to deal with it anymore. Yeah, yeah. Well, not that there's that no. many, but oh, it, I say it's you not just, that they're against. They got all their rules, and that's what's ridiculous. I say you hack up fucking fetuses in a Cuisinart to get fucking cures for Absolutely. shit. Absolutely, fuck it. Who cares? Until they're five, exactly. They should have <laughs> until they're five. They should have. You got nothing to lose. Drugs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Where it's so obvious if this person is gonna die, you got this new drug. It's the scenario you got nothing to lose, so uh-huh. I know it's not approved, but fuck it. And you have to literally sign away the kid's life. Right. Like if something happens, hey, you can't fucking sue us. Right. That's it. Period. No getting a lawyer even. I would love you know, I would love to know abs. the spin on that where they can't do that. Because I'm sure there's so many parents out there that know of drugs and things that they're still working on. Yeah. And but they know their kids running out of time or a relative or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, all right, it's the nothing to lose. And they would scenario. and they would chance it because they would the, chance it in a second. Yeah. Of course, you don't even have to go to the phones and ask uh, people. Sure. Yeah. 
Let's say hi to uh, Charlie and Philly. Oh, I fucked up. I meant to go to John. More Charlie, PC, you better be good. More PC shit. <laughs> more, <laughs> Sorry. more PC shit. Oh, those dummies. They really are. I get so confused because I'm like, oh. God, if we do try to show different sides of ourselves. It's fucking it's like, ridiculous. I, I know we're animals. I'm not going to try to sit here and act like we're like, exactly. you know, great guys, but... But the, there is there, ah, whatever. If you take any it. stance that they think is is inconsistent, not like hey, I don't agree with your stance. Like you're a sellout. You've changed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, dude, fucking relax. Uh, yeah. Let's say hi to Charlie <laughs> in Philly. Good morning, boys. How you doing? All right. Uh, you're talking about the progeria. I watched a show last night on the Learning Channel. It was about these people. They don't age. It, it was like opposite of progeria. Uh, had, uh, we did this eight, one. There's a there's a woman. It's creepy as all hell. Like her siblings are growing up around her, and she's pretty much stayed the same age. But the problem is she's um, she hasn't developed um, uh, mentally though. Right. It, it, we we did this. Thing. Do you remember that clip where they show her like uh, family pictures for like 15 years, and everyone's growing up around yeah, her? Yeah, she's yeah. the exact same. Wow, that's fucked up. Yep. Yeah, there it is. Doctors baffled. What's the headline again for the people out there? Doctors baffled, intrigued by girl who doesn't age. Yes, Charlie. We played the clip on the air a while ago. No, I'm sorry. I forgot. Oh, no worries. No worries. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. She's like, how old? She's and like, she looks like a baby. Yeah, she. they still have to treat her kind of like a toddler. Sure. And I think she's in, <laughs> I think she's upper teens or early 20s at this point, I think. If I remember correctly. I'm trying to give that medicine to everyone. <laughs> Yay. Thanks, Charlie. It's like Willy Wonka's kissy factory. <laughs> yeah, she's 16. 16, okay. I uh, meant to go to John, not Charlie, but Char that was good, Charlie. John in Maine, what's up? Hey, boys, how you doing? Hey. Hey, uh, yeah, two things on that documentary I watched it the other night. One was on and saying with a drug in the FDA, she has to get published by a medical journal. And so every time she submits it, they won't approve it unless she's published. So they denied her like three times. Ew. And then on the third time, yeah, they did say, if you revise it right. this way or that way, we'll accept it. So they finally accepted it. And so now the drug's in approval phase, and they're headed to the next step. But the thing about this disease is what she's discovered when she isolated this gene. And I'm not speaking from a medical point of view or anything, but... The protein that ages us just basically builds up quicker in these kids, and that's that it can't flow properly, I guess. And so yeah. that's what ages them so quickly. But they're thinking if she can isolate this and discover how to slow it down in these kids, think they're saying basically she could create almost the fountain of youth because if she could slow down aging and then you give it to a normal person, then... What could that do for a normal human being? Yeah, actually, it, it could benefit everybody. So let this yeah, lady, right. let this lady go if she wants to take it on. That's what we need: people living fucking hundreds of years. Well, there's hundreds of years. <laughs> hundred more, <laughs> hundred more years of that. Oh God! Yeah, you look three hundred. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would like to squeeze out another hundred, though. Yeah, just another hundred. That'd be well, nice. It relates to the heart disease, like all the like ant with sandwich, cardiovascular and whatnot. That yeah. these kids are getting that. So it's the people that you know eat shit all their lives and don't exercise. They get it, you know, brought on. But it's the people that are born with sort of that g genetic heart disease or high cholesterol, things like that. That this could save um, yeah. those people um, and get away from invasive surgeries and. You know, prolonging yeah. drugs, et cetera, et cetera. They didn't really get into, um, to make it, you understand, because, I mean, that would be a, a totally different documentary, the, the genetics of it, but they showed, like, this one little fucking speck in the DNA that, that is one. different. Yeah. One little fucking That's speck it, huh? that has to be... You, you, you realize the perfection that needs to take place during conception to have a normal kid come out, it's astounding that so many come out fucking normal. Uh, this one little fucking gene, and then they show, like, these things, they look like fucking little logs, and they're linking together, and that's how, you know, this uh, the the matrix of a, a human is initially right. formed. And then they show what happens when this uh, one little thing is wrong. Instead of linking end to end, one kind of falls on top of the other and just fucks the whole line up after that. And that's what happens. And it's like, 
That's all it takes. So they can't just remove that log, I, I that know. loggy thing. <laughs> you never, you don't even know what's happening at the time. It's, the, shit, uh, the shit in DNA is still too, oh, ridiculously yeah. it's, tiny. It's, it's you crazy. just need better microscopes. Blow that shit up. Yeah, <laughs> that'll Doctor, be a nice and Doctor I, Hopi's take. I'm telling you, we need you. bigger microscopes to it, see the shenanigans. It's too. It's too <laughs> tiny, so let's just blow everything up, and it's going to be very obvious what's going on. Oh, fuck. And then, like, operation, you're like, oh, okay, I got to get rid of this loggy thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger microscopes. Just make, just blow everything up, make it nice exactly. and big. John, thank you, sir. Thank you, Thanks, John. John. Yeah, but these will all be a thing of the past soon. Like once they map, oh. like uh, Kurzweil said, once it's mapped, yes. yeah. no more Down syndrome, no more progeria, no more cancer. All this shit will be. Well, they're already, right. they're at least they fixed a lot of that that. Uh, that Down syndrome thing. Well, not fixed it, but they can uh, detect it. Right, they can detect that, which is an odd thing, I guess. Uh, people that have Down syndrome children now, or not have them now, but are having them, are giving birth. <laughs> It's an odd circumstance. I guess they're so dead set against abortion or because um, you could find out very early on now with tests. Uh, but some people are just like, no, I'm not going to abort yeah. uh, under any circumstances. So does that mean like people that have Down syndrome children now are very religious? Is that kind of like what what happens? What do you mean? Uh, because you're not aborting if you realize that there's a problem. Uh is it your religion that, that keeps know. you from doing it? Or, you know, it, 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 it seems to me that the makeup of the parents of Down syndrome children today is a lot different than it used to be. Because it used to just be a crapshoot. You know, you didn't know until uh, you gave birth. I think there's probably some guilt involved, too, probably. You think? I don't know. I don't know how easy that would be to do. I, you're, a, you're a daddy. Would I you, personally... If you, if you knew something was amiss, wow, would you... Uh, here's the answer. I would... Get the old Hoover out? <laughs> I would... Oh, this is a bad question, but I, oh. I would absolutely go for the abort. Right. Thinking, it's okay, not bad. It's, there's, you know. there's more there's more kids in my ball bag, so. Yeah. <laughs> and those kids, you know, won't have a chance. Yeah. They, now they get their chance. Yeah. But I, I I don't think, my I don't know. I think my wife would fight me on it, though. Wow. Yeah, I think so. I'd have to do I'd have a, a, I'd have a Doc tough, Martin. You'd have to put your foot down and go, look, who pays the bills around here? <laughs> Where do you put your foot? Right on the abdomen. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have a tough time with that, but I, I I wouldn't be like skipping around. It would be a tough decision, but I yeah. that's, that's the direction I would I would. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's gotta that's be. Heavy I mean, shit. It's not a, a decision to be taken lightly, I'm sure. But uh, well, with I the mean, technology the way it is, and the fact that they can detect certain but, things. But I would also abort if I knew the kid was going to be a ginger. So you know. Ah, that's true. <laughs> All right. You know, you got to do the world a service. <laughs> But that's a decision vampires. couples have to make, and I bet you there is like a little conflict there where one's like all in, like no fucking way, I don't want to deal with this, and maybe the other person's like, no, we could deal with this. Well, the quandary is, uh, how far do you go? All right, genetically, you see that your kid's going to have Down syndrome. You you Dude, decide they're picking to abort. The, they're picking the the eye that's color it. at this point. Now, if you could find out the intelligence or yeah, eye color, yeah, I mean, where do you draw the line between? All right, abortion's legal. I know that the kid's going to be this, that, or the other thing. Do I abort because of eye color? Do I abort because of, you know, disease? And, and where does where does it become unethical? Right. You know? Well, they'll start just building whatever you want. Like, that's how it's going to be soon. I mean, you just won't have to even make instead that decision. Of the, right. Instead of just uh, trial and error and, and aborting what you don't like, you could just build what you like. I don't know. So it comes out. Uh, but then, you know, am I talking about a society of super children? Y you are. I think I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Linger. A tad long. I've been asked to donate my, my genetics. Oh, really? Yes, I have been. <laughs> what, to a fucking fish hatchery? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy paused way too long on that one. Because I had nothing. Oh, I, just, I had a thought and nowhere to go with it. I'm glad you brought it home. Oof. <laughs> fish hatchery. <laughs> oh, very funny. Sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton. Uh, 
Yeah, he he forged documents, and he even admits because they they interview him as uh, you know as he is today. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, I don't think anyone could get away with you know forging documents like that, right? But back then he was able to do it, and Fleet Bank went for him get, and said, "Here, here's your eighty million dollars." <laughs> so then all he had to do was come up with another eighty million dollars. Yeah. And then he had all sorts of excuses, and people started closing in on him, going, "What the fuck's going on here?" And he was able to make a deal, going, "Look, I owe you eighty. I think it was eighty-five. I owe you eighty-five, so I'll give you seventeen million a year for the next five years." So he had to come up with the first seventeen million dollar payment. Once again, the guy only had a couple hundred thousand to his name. Which you know, if you, if you think about it, that's broke. Yes. When you you need seventeen million. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then. Uh, the guy's like, look, I need my $17 million. He goes, I'm going to wire it, no problem. So he wires him $1,700. Yeah. And the guy ha- has to call him up and go, there's some kind of Russ Islanders fans. And uh, Islanders were sucking bad. And uh, this guy comes rolling in from Texas, 32-year-old guy that looks like he was 50 at the time, <laughs> horseshoe bald, basically uh, giving everyone a lot of hope that uh, he's going to turn around the Islanders, keep them on Long Island, get a new arena. Get rid of that stupid Islanders uh, logo, the old one. Or, well, not the old one, the in-between one, I guess I should say. Yeah. Then they went back to the old one. And then everything slowly but surely started falling apart on this guy. He needed to come up with $165 million. He was able to get a loan from uh, a bank in Boston, Fleet Bank, for mm-hmm. 80 was it 80 or $85 million? 85 mil? 85 million by forging all sorts of <laughs> documents. How do you do that? Well, it was the mid-90s. That just seems he even amazing. Because they, they interview him in this thing, this 30, uh, 30 on 30 or 30 for 30. What is uh-huh. it called? 30 on 30? 30 for 30. 30 for 30. Sam saw it as well. And uh, hey. You knew something awful was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, right. Good. We're pretty busy, but that's the way we like <laughs> it here. <laughs> and then even, it. Is this the Clark Gillies clip? Uh, it's, it is just the trailer. Oh, you want to see the trailer of this at least, Dan? Uh huh. All right. They were a team like no other. Hometown heroes. Probably not. Role models. Probably nice. Billy Smith. Champions. Bossy. They were the most successful expansion franchise of all time. We always said the success we had was our respect for the New York Islanders and what we learned Gretzky. from them. Talk. And when the triumphs ended. It was a long fall to the bottom. And that was it. I wouldn't have bought a ticket to watch our team play. We sucked. Mike Milbury. Until a savior emerged. <laughs> All of a sudden, here comes this savior. white knight, John Spano, in to save the Islanders. Enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Ah, good morning, everyone. Hi. Hello. Time for another radio show. Oh, my God. Yeah. We got a busy day, too. Very, very busy day. Ball. Kind of bummed. I thought I thought you would have seen the, uh, the John Spano thing by now. No, I heard about it. I want to discuss that so badly with you. Who's John Spano? I heard he, about he it. He bought the Islanders even though he had no money. Literally had no money. I think he, they said he was worth maybe a couple hundred thousand, or maybe he had a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank. <laughs> and he had to come up maybe. with $165 million in cash to buy the team. This was back in the, uh, the mid-90s. Right. He was our big, uh, our big, you know, great white hope. Oh, yeah. For mistake, uh, it was, it's supposed to be seventeen million. This is missing a few zeros. I just got seventeen hundred. He goes, "That's impossible." <laughs> but the, the pan- bank must have fucked up. <laughs> the panic that had set in too, because when he transferred the seventeen hundred, yeah, and he owed them another eighty-five million, yeah. They had already signed the team to him. Yeah. They sold him the team even though he didn't have the money. Because yeah, he said, I'll pay you tomorrow if you sell, yeah. sell me the team today. He was a great talker, and he was able to go, oh, no, I'm good for it. And he, <laughs> and he would show all these documents of all his money and his and his uh, finances. You know, they, it was tied up here in the Cayman Islands. It was tied up in England. It was this and that. But it, 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 he had numbers he that he was pulling, showing uh, people. He was pulling to Jerry Lundegaard. Yes. That's exactly what he was doing. Yes. Oh, we'll get those numbers to you. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we'll send them right over. Now, oh, Mr. Lundegaard, uh, if you don't send those over, we're going to have to recall those loans. Ah, uh-huh. okay. 
<laughs> that's exactly okay. what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Best, best panicked acting ever. Oh, oh God. Amazing. 